Hello! This video is a follow-up to my previous one, so if you haven't seen that, I suggest you might want to go and watch that first just so this actually makes sense, and I'll have linked it in the description below and it will be linked at the end of this video. But what I'm going to do today is take another look at these Van Gogh pocket box sets of watercolours. So I've got Shades of Nature and Muted Colours. Now I had some issues with them and the first one being that the Shades of Nature does not have a blue or even really a red and so it's made this palette extremely limited and not very useful at all. This one had three colours that are the same as what was in this set and so I didn't really want to open them and you'll see in this box I have three empty spaces. I did manage to get a couple of paintings from the two sets as they stood like that and I just moved the three colors from this one over here while I was painting it but I decided that I would really like to have three new colors and I did indeed go and buy some here they are here so I'm just going to show you some footage of that it's a little out of sync because I'd filmed that before I filmed the paintings but I will put that in so you can see the colors that I bought and then I will come back to this and show you the swatches so we just happened to go past the art shop. I bought three more colors to fill those spaces up. I cannot deal with these empty spots. They're driving me crazy. I ended up getting Meadow Lake Deep, Thalo Blue, and this one I really wanted to get Ultramarine Deep, but of course they'd run out and who knows when they'll get more stock in. So I've gone with Cobalt Blue, which is actually a mix of Ultramarine and a bit of white in it. It's as close as I can get and it will do for now. So of course these are going to be in a right mess, but I may as well paint the colours into these squares. Okay, thankfully I really like all three of them. That thalo blue is gorgeous and I love that Madder Lake Deep. The cobalt blue looks enough like an ultramarine for me to be happy, so I am pleased I picked those three. But what a mess this palette's turned out to be. And now we're caught up. <laughs> so you can see that I have this palette filled up with paints now, but the trouble that I have with these sets is that the colors are completely out of any kind of logical order and that will drive me crazy. Plus I have all of my primary colors in one palette and none in this one essentially. So I think I'm actually going to completely change the order of both palettes and create two new palettes that will both be useful. So I've basically painted out all of the colors from both sets and I can then move them around and rearrange them onto these two here so I can have a nice idea of what I might want in both sets. I will come back once I have made a decision. Wow that was difficult. Anyone would think I was trying to come up with a way to fly to Mars but anyway <laughs> I have got somewhere. So I've organized two palettes and what I decided to do rather than coming up with two entirely new ideas I would expand on the shades of nature and the muted colors and see if I could create a more pleasing palette for both. I think I've done that. For example I've got a primary grouping there and I also have another primary grouping here. I'm going to paint them in and that's it for now. I mean it's not like I can't use both palettes at once <laughs> but I just wanted to have two sets that at least you can use individually if need be. Of course my ink pad has decided at this very moment to run out of ink and so I had to go over everything with a pen and it's a bit of a mess but never mind I managed to squeeze them in here and then I will do some paintings on the back so I'll swatch these in and we can see what my new configurations look like and then you can let me know if it's an improvement or if I should have just kept them the way they were. So the first thing I did was move that bright quinacridone rose from the muted colors into shades of nature being a cool magenta color, this one's very useful for mixing with that phthalo blue which we will see later to make a really bright purple. I also kept the permanent orange in the shades of nature because I figured that this would be a warmer counterpart to the quinacridone rose and you can mix those two together to make a deeper red. 
Then I've got Azo Yellow Medium and the Azo Green Yellow. I just thought I might as well keep those two together because they're nice and bright and very useful for bright leafy colours in the sunshine. You can see I have not put the pigment numbers once again because I forgot and I was going to read them out now but it is so hot and I just don't want to get bogged down too much in those pigment numbers so I'll put a chart in the description if you want to know what's in these. I'm not too bothered, I just go by the colour. <laughs> Sap green is a lovely bright one and I thought this would be fun to have in the shades of nature. Along with the phthalo blue, if you dilute that out enough it makes a pretty good sky blue, at least what the sky looks like in Australia. And it mixes really well with quinacridone rose, as I said, to make a nice bright purple. Indigo I added in here for a dark blue. I wanted to have a dark shade in both sets, so I was dithering over whether to put the indigo or the neutral. I thought the phthalo blue and the indigo go quite nicely together, so that's why I ended up choosing that. And then in contrast I have that very light titanium buff as well. It's good for all sorts of things like sand and tree bark, things like that. I kept the yellow ochre in this one, but you'll see I moved out the raw sienna to the other palette. Then I had burnt umber in here, which I kind of changed my mind on later, and I'll explain that a bit further into the video what I did instead. But I had for now the burnt umber, and then coming in with the raw umber, which is a cooler brown. And that's always a useful colour for tree trunks and ground, stuff like that. <laughs> so I was trying to think of shades of nature for this. And then I kept the Van Dyke brown in here because if you mix indigo and deep brown like this, you can get a really good black. So I thought those two would go well together in the same palette. Now I move on to the muted colours. And the first one I have here is that Madder Lake Deep. It's a much darker red than the quinacridone rose, and I thought it would be more suitable for muted. Gamboge, it's still bright, but seeing as I have Azo Yellow Medium in the other palette, I figured this one might as well stay in the muted colours so that I have a yellow primary. I've got the Naples Yellow Red here, which was originally in this palette, and I just moved it around to a more suitable place. I've got the Raw Sienna, which is very similar to the Yellow Ochre, so it's nice to have one of each. And then here I've got the Burnt Sienna, and right now as I'm painting it out, I realise it's far too bright for a muted palette. So I have done a switcheroo on a couple of these colours, but the other dark brown that were in both of these sets is the Sepia. So I have Van Dyke in one and Sepia in the other. Both are excellent browns, I could have put them either way around, it doesn't really matter. And then I figured that the Olive Green is the more muted of the two greens, that Sap Green is a lot brighter, so I kept my olive green in this palette. Now the turquoise green was one that I really seriously considered putting into the Shades of Nature, but the reason I kept it here is because in my previous video I mentioned how well it mixes in with that lavender, so I just kept it in this palette, and I added in the cobalt blue, which is that ultramarine mixed with white, and this is a more muted blue than that phthalo. And in with the lavender, I've just got these three pretty colours together. It's debatable as to whether they're actually considered muted, but I think at least the lavender has got quite a lot of white, so it's not as saturated as another purple, say dioxazine purple would be. And then I kept the Davies Grey in there, and the neutral black. It could have been the indigo, but I think I made the right choice here, keeping the neutral in the muted palette. So here's the new configuration, but of course I have to change my mind at least once, and this Burnt Sienna just feels way too bright to be in the muted palette, so I'm going to swap it over with the Burnt Umber, and I've got these two little cards here. I will just stick them on with a bit of washi tape for now, and worry about fixing those later. But it feels like Burnt Sienna should go here, so it's Yellow Ochre Burnt Sienna Raw Umber and Van Dyke Brown. Because the raw umber is so close to that sepia, I just feel like it would be better to put the burnt umber here, which is a redder brown. There! I think that looks a lot better. It feels a bit more muted now that I've got the burnt umber there. I mean, these colours are still bright, but there's not much I can do because this is the colour palette that I have to work with, and unless I go out and buy more colours, it's not exactly going to change, and I really don't feel like buying any more colours. I'm going to do some more paintings with these reconfigured sets and see what else I can come up with. 
Using Becky logic, I decided to paint on the back side of the other paintings. So this is in fact the muted color palette because it's behind the water wheel. I don't know why I decided they all needed to be on the same piece of paper, but I just didn't want to leave a blank page in my sketchbook. So here we are. <laughs> I really hope these videos aren't too complicated. I feel like I've just overthought everything and it's gotten quite confusing, but I've tried to edit it enough to make it make sense. I really hope it does. So moving on to the painting with the muted palette and I went for a rather bright subject. It's a scarlet butterfly, another photo I found off the Facebook reference page. I was looking at the colors that I had in the set and it just seemed like it would fit this particular picture really well. And I think I used just about every color in this palette for this painting at some point, whether it was mixed in together with a different color or just used individually. I'm so happy I have a nice red and blue in this set because it just makes life a lot easier to mix many more shades when you have the primary colors and even though that gamboge is a bright yellow it's still very useful to have in this palette. But of course admittedly I struggled a bit with today's paintings. I don't know if the other day I was just having a particularly good painting day and they worked really well but these ones seem to not turn out as well as I wanted them to and they were a bit of a mess. But overall, I do like my changes to this palette. Although the muted colors, the original palette actually was okay. It wasn't as difficult to use as the shades of nature. For most of this painting, I ended up doing two layers as it had gone quite pale, especially in the background. And I used a bit of pen to define a few lines and add in some highlights. So rather bright for a muted palette. Oh well, on to the next painting. This is with the new and improved Shades of Nature palette and I much prefer how this one looks. I ended up using a larger brush for this because I wanted to do a flat wash and using one of those tiny little pocket brushes is hopeless for it. I have no patience. But of course I managed to get a lot of water on the page and the paints just ran everywhere. I had a lot of fun with this though. I love that phthalo blue. It's one of my favorite ever blues. I know a lot of people think it's too bright but that's the whole reason why I like it and I am glad that I included the indigo with it because those two just go so well together. So for my shades of nature I decided to choose a picture that had a sunset in it. Now mine is quite a lot brighter than the original painting but that's okay I'm allowed to have a bit of artistic license when I come to do my actual paintings <laughs> and I should have wet the background first on the bottom but I kind of just went in with the paints which is why it looked a bit funny there for a while but I'm glad I switched in the burnt sienna to this palette because it is just so nice and bright and I really like the reddish brown it worked perfectly for this painting so overall I'm really happy with this and I've had fun using these palettes over the last week or so. I've learned a lot about them and from you guys as well because I did not even realize that the end of the paintbrush has that chisel edge which you use to dig the pans out. It seems so obvious now but I just did not see that at all. And also a lovely viewer pointed out that you can actually remove that tray of mixing wells in the lid here and also use the inside of the lid. I did not realize this either until I was actually in the editing phase when I'd seen that message. So we live and learn and thank you so much for your input because I'm a bit daft sometimes and I get overly excited when I'm opening a new product so I don't always think to look at the details until much later. Honestly I'm so hopeless sometimes. <laughs> 
let's just chalk that up to being an eccentric artist who wants to share things but gets too excited and carried away sometimes. I'm not very logical, I just love pretty colours and making artworks with new products rather than being all technical. But I'm adding in the details of the horizon line here and the trees on top. It's kind of a silhouette type painting and very much exaggerated with colours, especially that phthalo blue. But how pretty is it with the quinacridone rose? I love those two colours together. And with the azo yellow, it's such an excellent primary grouping. You can do so much with it. And I am very happy now that my Shades of Nature actually has colours that are practical for nature. So here are today's paintings, along with two very messy palettes. I've certainly used these. You can see they've got divots in them already from all of my exploits this week. They seem to be a lot brighter now than the original two palettes of colours, which were a lot more muted. I still think these two paintings are my favourites out of the lot of them, ironically. Especially this one, this is my absolute favourite. But I still had fun painting these two and I like the fact that now I can have some blues in there and get a lot more bright colour. Here are the two palettes side by side, the original ones and my 2.0 versions. <laughs> Bearing in mind that these three were not originally in here and originally they were buff titanium, burnt sienna and olive green in these ones as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope these two videos have been helpful and if they have been I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and also if you can click that subscribe button that would be awesome. I hope you're all having a fantastic day out there and I will see you again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!